can enjoy the game like I want to enjoy the game. I Tell them, Nick. What? Okay. Uh, no. I take Nick to the um, – we go to the Penn State-Ohio State game. Mm -hmm. We're down. We're doing a bunch of stuff before the game. They kick the ball off, balls in the air. Guy catch the ball. What did I say, Nick? Hit him where he bends, man. <laughs> Chris is just rooting for Savage. violence. Nick is looking at me like, God, who is this guy? <laughs> just, just, and, then, and, then, and then after big hits, he turns to me, you know where he hit him? Hit him where he been. That, he, exactly. that one hurts now. <laughs> Chris hurt. just rooting for guys to be limping, walking off. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> when, Car when Carson wins. No, <laughs> then we no, should. <laughs> then we should. We should. That C -C old school NFL right there. Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want anyone to hit you where it hurts. No. So we're just going to. No, those start. days are done, Jeff. Those, those are finished. Hit him where he been. Hey, hyperbole aside, the top two best, most awesome, biggest hype, biggest build teams in the AFC are facing off this weekend. It is the Patriots, it is the Steelers, and if I miss it, I'll just die. All right, fine. A little bit of hyperbole. You could argue in a battle of the best quarterbacks of all time in Tom Brady, we'll be taking on the powerful killer bees. You got your Ben, you got your Brown, and you got your Le'Veon Bell. A lot on the line for Sunday's matchup. Here's Big Ben on if the lead-up to this game has a different feel. Not for me. Um, maybe because I've been around here long enough. I've uh, seen a lot of big games, been in a lot of big games. Uh, for me, it's this week. It's the biggest game of the week because it's the game this week. Um, I know everyone has been building this up because of the records, the teams, things like that. But um, for me, it's about this week and the team we play, and they're the best in the world. All right, Chris, let's break this down a little bit. What is the biggest key to this matchup? Well, Jenna, you were talking about the killer bees. I know that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to get Juju Smith-Schuster back from that one-game suspension. So does that make them the Juju bees? It's the Juju bees. <laughs> Well I, can't, I can't even take credit for that. That's my co-host on my radio show, Rick DiPietro. He came up with that. Oh, okay. But in looking at not this, even a football guy. Yeah, not even a football guy, but he's creative. Those hockey guys. You know them. But um, looking at this matchup, one of the things that I will say, looking at Bill Belichick, how he likes to play, he's going to take away your number one offensive threat. And to me, that has to be Antonio Brown because he's playing at an MVP type level. He's already got over 1,500 yards receiving. That guy is just explosive. If you look at their two matchups last year, the games that the Steelers lost, Antonio Brown didn't have any touchdowns. So look for Bill Belichick to do that. He's probably going to bracket Antonio Brown, have somebody outside over the top, somebody inside underneath had those cut coverages, make sure that you don't give him any easy touches. Then you got to focus on Le'Veon Bell. Now, with the way that that New England Patriots defense has looked during the course of the season, they haven't looked great against stopping the run. Yes. But one thing they do do is lock down in the red zone. You look at that, they're fifth in points against. So they'll let you get all those yards, but they're not going to let you score touchdowns. And going up against Tom Brady and that offense, I know they didn't look good on Monday night, but going up against that offense, you got to get seven when you get in the red zone. You can't settle for three. And let's face it, when's the last time the Patriots lost back-to-back -back games? 2015, and before that, 2012. So it don't happen very often. And this game is for home field in the AFC. So this is a big ball game. The Patriots know what's at stake. I look to see the best from them. And I think that they're going to win this game. It's as big of a late season, regular season game as the Pats have played in years. Like the, you yes. late in the season, you're typically playing your divisional games. Mm -hmm. The Pats are where the last time I remember a game this late in the year that could determine home field. I think Peyton Manning was on the other side of the field. He's been retired for a couple of years now. Like so, the, this is a bigger game outside of the postseason than. The Pats are used to playing in the Steelers are used to playing in big late season games because they're usually fighting for their division. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're playing usually at a, yep. a, the tier right beneath New England. But to your point on Antonio Brown, like listen, you take away your biggest option, and that is obviously Antonio Brown. He is an MVP candidate. Just in his last four weeks, last four games, he has 627 yards receiving and six touchdowns. For some context, Des Bryant for the year. Has 712 yards, six touchdowns. Wait, wait, so, say that. Wait, wait, say that one more time, man. Antonio Brown for the season, 627. I'm sorry, Antonio Brown the last four games, four weeks, 627 and six touchdowns. Dez for the year, 712 and six touchdowns. Wow. So, the, you can say that says more about Dez or AB, what, whatever it is. Antonio Brown has been dominant, and that is my concern for New England. You have to double him. That means you're going to have to tackle Le'Veon Bell in space. Yep. There are not going to be a lot of opportunities for gang tackling mm -hmm. because you're going to have two of your 11 dedicated to A.B. because you have to. That's not even to speak to Martavis Bryant. It's not even to speak to Juju Smith-Schuster. And I know the Pats have owned the Steelers the last few years, but the context matters. In the playoff game in last year, 
Le'Veon Bell played eight snaps, ran the ball four times. He's injured. Mm -hmm. At the first game of the or in the game to begin the 2015 season, Le'Veon Bell was suspended. So two of those three games, Le'Veon Bell was not a factor at all or didn't even play. Having to deal with the killer bees operating at full capacity is not something the Pats have a lot of experience with. The Pats in that AFC championship game also, they didn't have Gronk. Now, to me, there is no person that has more to gain with a victory or a stellar performance than Gronkowski. He did something that New England Patriots don't do. Got a personal foul, got, got his team in the situation where they went to Miami shorthanded. Now they are looking at, man, we could potentially be the third or the fourth seed in this thing when we were in the driving seat, driver's seat. So Gronk will be motivating this game. He is a great end-of-the-line blocker. I believe that will be his number one contribution. We know he's a mismatch on their safeties and their linebackers. And the other player is Chris Hogan in the AFC Championship. You mentioned it. He was huge in that game. So between Gronk and Hogan, I believe that they are able to match the productivity of the Pittsburgh, of, of, especially Antonio Brown, because I believe Belichick will limit him and force him to throw the ball other ways. But watch Gronk in this game. Best non-quarterback, potentially, Gronkowski in this game. Chris, are you surprised at all that the Patriots are actually favored in this one? Not even a little bit because they've won the last four matchups. They've won the last five out of six. So, I mean, the Patriots have the Steelers' number, and a big reason why, I think, is how the Patriots play on offense versus what the Steelers want to do defensively. Mm -hmm. The Steelers are a zone blitz team. <laughs> it's hard to zone blitz when you have an offense that majors in a lot of option routes underneath. you got to match those man-to-man. -man. And I don't think the Steelers have the personnel in the back seven to be able to do that. So I think that's the issue in terms of the Steelers being able to neutralize Tom Brady in that passing attack. You made another great point earlier about the Steelers having to capitalize in the red zone, which is where the Pat Stevens has excelled because yes. they're still near the bottom of the league in yards allowed. They're 29th in the league in yards allowed, yet somehow they're fifth in the league in scoring defense. How? Because they hold you to three instead of giving seven where they turn you over. The Steelers, very interesting butterfly effect of the Shazier injury. Prior to Ryan Shazier's injury in the season, they'd allowed 25 red zone trips by their opponent. Only 12 of those had resulted in touchdowns. Since Shazier's injury, they've allowed six red zone trips. All six have resulted in touchdowns. So the, the very it's small sample, but the very recent history says when New England gets in the red zone, they're getting their seven. So the question is, can the Steelers match them for it? How can the Steelers keep them out of the red zone? Man, Pittsburgh's been great this year at sacking the opposing quarterback. Yep. The only reason we're not talking about it more is because Jacksonville is on a near record setting pace. But they're second in the league to Jacksonville, getting after Tom Brady, which is something Miami did. Only two sacks, but a half dozen other hits. That's what made Tom Brady feel so uncomfortable on Monday. I think one of the surprising things that people would look at, watch for the big plays in the passing game. People look at Pittsburgh and say, wow, Pittsburgh, man, they're way more explosive than New England. No, they're not. New England has more pass plays over 20 yards going into this game than the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if they come out of this game with more of those plays, that will lead to winning. All right, Chris, stick around. Come up. Is this a must win for the Seahawks against the Rams? We've never said the words must win before for anything. Nope. That's next on First Things First.